Why is five times zero zero? What do you mean? Yeah, yeah. Why is five times zero? Because it's five. It's zero times five. Like, so. All right. If you multiply five times one, you're multiplying one five times. Wait, no. You're multiplying five one, one time. time. So, so it's five. <laughs> if you take it, if you take the one away, you're just multiplying five zero times. So that's that means that it's zero. So there's never a five. It's just zero. That makes sense. Zero. <laughs> it's just zero times any number, so it's always gonna be zero. What? Why is five times zero zero? You can't uh, say. Max already said it. No, what did he say? Because it's five zero times. Yeah, that's that's what the question is. Why is five times zero equals zero? Because they taught me that in school. <laughs> How does that make you feel? <laughs> they never taught us why. <laughs> Alright, welcome. This is, this is the beginning of our second chapter in algebra. The first chapter was all about learning the axioms and the rules. Today we get to learn, we get to begin to learn what we can do with them. It's an amazing chapter. It will explain everything that you ever wanted to know about algebra, everything that you were supposed to learn in third and fourth grade, but you didn't. You just were told, hey, memorize this, this is how it goes. Well, today's a day of redemption. Redemption day for your three and a half pound brain. Here we go. Why is it that when we multiply by zero, you get zero? The goal here is, uh, well, the goal will be to learn why, why is five times zero equal to zero? Everybody knows it is, but nobody can really give you a straight answer. So today's a nice, very, very nice day. We get like to learn why. The ingredients, the ingredients are gonna be the stuff that we learned last couple weeks, the axioms. Let me run through them real quickly. We learned addition and multiplication tables for natural numbers, commutativity laws, associativity laws, cancellation laws, identity elements, inverse elements, equality axioms, and a distributive law. Roughly speaking, that's what we did last week. Today we're doing it in 20 seconds. These are the ingredients with which you can cook anything you want. You are the chef. Okay? You can play the game any way you want. These are the ingredients. It's beautiful. So <clears throat> the goal here is to compute 5 times 0. To compute that, these are the ingredients. This is the goal. This is the ingredients. This is the goal. We need a chef, a very chefy idea that will get us there because it's not exactly clear how we can use these to do that. But wait. The chef idea comes like this. Start with 0 plus 0 equals 0. I know. Who would have thought that's where to start? It's amazing. That's why somebody chefed it and said, you know what, I think that's how we should start. They didn't look it up in a recipe. They just chefed it. And it's a beautiful thing. That's why it's so nice to be human. I love being human because we have the capacity to do stuff like that. Start with something crazy. All right, talk is cheap. Let's do it. All right, goal here is to figure out what in the world is 5 times 0. Not to figure out, but to prove it with amazing logic and beautiful reasoning. Perfection in reasoning, that's what we sell. So we start off with this chef idea, 0 plus 0 is equal to 0, and we try to justify it. Why is that? Well, 0 added to anything, nothing happens. That's called the additive identity. So that's why this line is okay. It's the additive identity. Additive 0. Next. Uh, what we could do is we could rewrite the same line here. We ultimately want that, so we're going to get that out of the next line. 0 plus 0 is equal to 0. I could go on and I could slap a 5 on both sides. I slap a 5 on this side. So long as I five, slap a 5 on that side, that would be legal. And we have a famous axiom for that. It's called multiplying both sides by the same number. Not really. It's not called that. It's called the cancellation law of multiplication. Next, I note here that I could distribute this if I wanted to. That's famous, that's called the distributive law, and that's exactly what I'm going to do here. I'm going to use the distributive law to distribute this in this line. So I'll get, um, I'll keep it white. 5 times 0 plus 5 times 0 is equal to 5 times 0. That's what happens when you distribute this. Whew. Wait, there's more. I, ultimately, I'd like to know what that is. Maybe I could subtract one of those from both sides and figure out what it is. See, if these weren't there, I'd be in business. Well, we can't subtract in this class. We only do things that are, we only use the ingredients that we have. Use 
these ingredients. These are our ingredients. So we stick to these ones. Um, there is one in there that says I can add stuff to both sides, just like multiplying both sides. Why don't we try that? So we go on and do uh, rewrite this 5 times 0 plus 5 times 0 is equal to 5 times 0. And here we go with the modification. The modification would go like this, so like so. I take the left side and I add to it a negative 5 times 0 and I take the right side and I add to it a negative 5 times 0. That's a 5 times 0 killer, the additive inverse. Cancellation law of addition. Okay? Adding stuff to both sides. Now what? Now I could take these parentheses and I can slide them over and group these that are going to kill each other. That would give us a line that looks like this. That would give us 5 times 0 plus 5 times 0 plus negative 5 times 0 is equal to 5 times 0 plus negative 5 times 0 and that would give us the parentheses here that after they slide it rolled over to those we have perfect justification that's called associative law of addition it's beautiful isn't it? Oh, wait there's more now do we know how to add blah plus negative blah a number plus the negative version of it we sure do. Even if we don't know what that number is, for all the numbers in our class, most of the numbers in our class, a number plus the negative version of it will give you zero. So, this will give us, and we have a famous axiom for that, famous ingredients we're using here. This is zero, and that's equal to zero. Those are called additive inverses. That's the yin and the yang for addition. They're, they complete each other and give you the identity element, the water element. Now, zero, look at this, zero plus anything. What does zero do? Zero is a do nothing element, it does nothing to it. So, therefore, this would have to be five times zero, and that's equal to zero. That's by, of course, additive identity. Ipikaye. See why they pay me? That's it, that's a proof right there. Beautiful, perfect, flawless reasoning. Perfection, beauty, and creativity in reasoning like you've never seen. That's what mathematicians do. That's what we do. And while we're at it, we woo women. This is a perfect, perfect reasoning. It's a proof why 5 times 0 is equal to 0. Now, suppose that we wanted to do a different problem. Not 5, but what about 7 times 0? How do we know that 7 times 0 is equal to 0? Well, if we wanted to do it, we could play exactly, exactly the same game that we did before. We go 0 plus 0 is equal to 0 by additive identity. I could slap a 7 on both sides. That's by cancellation law of multiplication. I could distribute it. 7 times 0 plus 7 times 0 is equal to 7 times 0. That's by distributive law. <coughs> I gave up. Uh, zero, 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 zero is a do-nothing element. Is the additive identity. Boom. And so you see, <coughs> these are exactly, exactly the same steps that we had before for 5. And so we have this idea that maybe, maybe we don't have to repeat every sing all of these steps every single time. And so we have this idea of packaging, packaging steps. Uh, it's a nice, it's an amazing idea. You're gonna love it. I love it, and it's gonna work like this. So we take this, uh, all these steps here, and which are exactly the same steps that we had before, and we package them. We package them into something very, very, very nice uh, called a theorem. It's almost like these. These are the ingredients. This is our creation, and the whole thing we're gonna package it into one one food, one one uh, theme and it's going to be called the zero multiplication theorem. And that will contain all these steps into one and for sure we will use OMT, zero multiplication theorem. That's going to be the package that contains all these steps. Once it's packaged you own it, once you've proven it you own it and then you can use it anytime you want, anywhere, anytime you will feel comfortable using it because it's yours. You understand every step in there. And then it would work like this. It would work like this. Uh, you'd, you'd have something like this. You'd have uh, 7 times 0. What is that equal to? Oh, 0. Why? Because of 0 multiplication theorem. And then you're done. That has all the steps built into it. That's just an example. But you could go all day long on this. 13 times 0. How much is that? 0. Oh, why? Because it's 0 multiplication theorem. Boom. You could do another example. What even the other way? Zero times eleven. What is that equal to? Zero. Why? Because of zero multiplication theorem. 
see you could do this all day long now it's yours it's part of your repertoire once you own it um, you could even do negative numbers 0 times negative 12 even though we've never multiplied other negative numbers we know how to multiply it by 0 that would give you 0 by 0 multiplication theorem beautiful the packaging of axioms those are the ingredients OMT is what we created out of the ingredients okay so just to summarize uh, today we uh, did our first theorem zero multiplication theorem it works for uh, all the uh, real numbers from our class or symbols or variables that represent real numbers works both ways any number times zero is equal to zero and the other way around as well any zero times any number is still equal to zero OMT our first theorem now you own it See you guys here next time. Peace.